you don't want to work for a company who you feel like is going to go downhill because as the company is going downhill your pay is going downhill Woo, that'll do it <laughs> you don't have to worry about me you do not have to worry about me <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Jelana and this is the Tech Flex. And today we're gonna to be talking about total compensation and how we get paid in tech. You definitely want to know a lot about this topic before you start your job search because not being educated on this could definitely lead to you being lowballed and getting finessed by recruiters. And we really just don't want that. The way that the pay is structured at traditional companies compared to the way that the pay is structured at tech companies is very, very different. So you definitely want to know all of the ins and outs in regards to your pay. So without further ado, let's get into it. It's not that I don't Back again with another outfit of the day. Totally work appropriate, I love it. The sweater is from Shein. Y'all know these are my favorite trousers from Because of Alice. And my bag is from Jacquemus. But anyway, girl, let's get back to the video. In the tech industry, specifically at tech companies, your pay is split into a number of areas. So there's usually a base pay, bonus, as well as equity. These three components come together to create your total annual compensation, otherwise known as total comp. The first area that we're gonna talk about is base pay. So most of you probably already know what a base pay is because that's pretty much the most common way to be paid whether you're in the tech industry or not. Your base salary is a set amount of money that you are guaranteed to receive annually, regardless of personal or company performance. So this is a fixed value. However, it can increase annually due to inflation, performance, or a promotion. So for me, base salary is one of the most important parts of my total compensation because this pretty much determines how I can live monthly what kind of apartment I can afford, what kind of car I can drive, how much I'm saving, my trips, things like that. Basically, all of those things are things that I pay for through my base salary. So I personally am looking for this one the most out of all the other components in my total compensation. The other aspects of my total compensation are definitely nice, but to me this is most important, at least for the age and like the time of my life that I'm in right now. So the next part of your total compensation that we're going to talk about is your bonus. There are two types of bonuses when you're working in tech. There's a sign-on bonus and there's also a performance-based bonus. It is very common to be offered a signing bonus if you're working in tech. This bonus is usually something that you get right when you start working, maybe around your first paycheck or at least within the first 30 days. Your sign-on bonus is something that you only get one time, so you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're reviewing your offer letter. The sign-on bonus is also usually more easier to negotiate seeing that you do only get it once. Companies are a little bit more lenient to increase your sign-on bonus than increasing your base or anything like that because your base is something that you get every year and your sign-on bonus only happens once. So if you are negotiating, definitely go hard to negotiate in every aspect, but your sign-on bonus is usually where there's a lot more wiggle room. For me personally, I did negotiate all three areas of my total compensation, but I definitely found that the signing bonus area was a lot easier for me to negotiate. I feel like that's because companies have big pay bans when it comes to salary and equity. Since the signing bonus is just a one-time thing, they're usually a little bit more flexible. So the signing bonus is great and all, but this is definitely not something that I include in my total annual compensation because it only happens once and not annually. Most large tech companies offer a yearly performance-based bonus. Upon receiving your offer, you will probably receive a target for each year. For example, they might say that on average, they give out about 10%, but this number can fluctuate due to seniority, personal performance, as well as company performance. As long as tech remains a booming industry, I don't think you'll have to worry about your performance bonus being below the target. I think in most cases, you will get either the 10% or whatever percentage that they told you about, if not higher. Unlike the base salary, this amount is not fixed per year. It varies every year. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when calculating your expenses and things that you can afford. Personally, I like to use my bonus for things like saving, investing, and things like that. I would never allocate my bonus to go towards something that I really need because at the end of the day, you just never know how much you're going to get. So for me, I always treat it as free money that I can use to kind of make some money moves or something like that. Another side note that I want to make about bonuses is that 
depending on the company, they might come at different times of the year. So some companies, the end of the year is literally in December at the actual end of the year. So that's usually when you might get your bonus. Some companies you might see it around January, maybe a month after their end of the year. But for other companies that go on a different type of calendar, like my company, our end of the year is actually in June. So we don't really see our bonuses until around September. And also keep in mind that if you do join your company in the middle of the year or something like that, that your bonus might be prorated, meaning that you might only get a percentage of your bonus seeing that you weren't there for the full year. So the next part that we're gonna talk about is equity and growth. This part is so tricky, but it's so, so, so important. Oftentimes in tech, a large part of your compensation will be paid in stock. Upon receiving your offer and starting the company, you will be granted a lump sum amount of restricted stock units, otherwise known as RSUs. A lot of times you will find that the more money that you make, the more your pay will consist of stock. For entry level software engineers, stock makes up of 20 to 30% of our pay. However, once you get to the higher roles, the roles that are making about 500K plus a year, like staffs, software engineers, senior staff, software engineers, and up, you will see that stock makes up around 50 to 60% of their pay. The equity part of total compensation is why it is so important to work for a company who you believe in because you don't want to work for a company who you feel like is going to go downhill because as the company is going downhill, your pay is going downhill. But on the flip side, if the company is doing really well, your pay naturally increases every year because your stock is growing every year. I honestly think that stock is a pretty cool part of my pay. I love checking to see how Microsoft is doing and just seeing like how my stock is growing throughout the time I've been at LinkedIn. In my first six months at LinkedIn, my Microsoft stock grew about 30%, which I think is amazing. So it just goes to show how important it is to work for a company whose stock you feel like is going to do well. So here is how equity works. So like I said, when you receive your offer and you start the company, you receive restricted stock units, otherwise known as RSUs. RSUs vest over time. Vesting means that over time, those shares that you earned are yours. So gradually they become yours and you're able to sell them or hold on to them. Typically at tech companies, it takes about four years to fully vest your initial stock award. So just to reiterate, when you sign your offer and you start the company, it usually takes four full years for you to fully vest all of your stock. So typically at most companies, at the end of your first year, you vest 25% of your stock. Then after that first year, every month you will receive bits and pieces of your stock, which add up to about 25% per year of the stock that you were initially granted when you received your offer. So basically to re-explain that, each year for four years, you earn gradually 25% of your stock. And then after that fourth year, you finally have earned or vested 100% of your stock. So after that first year, as you gradually vest, bits and bits of your stock, you're able to do whatever you want with those shares. The reason why we count that towards our total annual compensation is because every year we vest 25% of our stock and technically we can do whatever we want with that vested stock. We can sell it and just have it as cash in our bank account, which I don't recommend, but it's still an option if you wanted to do that. You can also hold on to it. Like I said earlier, if it's a company that you really believe in, you can just keep those shares within that company. You can also sell those shares and diversify and invest in other tech companies or in other industries. You can go into real estate and invest that way. I definitely would consult a financial advisor before you make any decisions in regards to your shares because you want to make sure that you're making the right financial decisions. Now that we've learned about what base, equity, and bonuses are in tech, we're going to talk about how to calculate your total compensation. So to sum it all up, we have one, our base, which is your annual salary. It's pretty much a fixed number. Secondly, we have our bonus, which varies from year to year and is based on performance. Just keep in mind that we're not adding our signing bonus into our total compensation right now. And lastly, we have our equity, which is usually a lump sum amount of restricted stock units that are vested over the course of four years. So your total annual compensation is your base plus your bonus plus your equity that you gain per year. So for example, let's take the total compensation of a software engineer at Google. At Google, a software engineer will make entry level a base of $138,000. Now it's time to add the equity. As soon as they start the company, they are granted $148,000 in equity, which is vested over the course of four years. So if we wanna calculate how much equity we will get per year, we will divide that in four. When we divide that number in four, we get $37,000. So now it's time to add the bonus. 
So let's just say, for example, at Google, the recruiter says that the target performance bonus is around 10%. Now we're gonna calculate what 10% of our base is. Our base was $138,000. We're getting a 10% bonus that totals into $13,800 per year. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to our total compensation. So now for total compensation, we have an $138,000 base, plus $37,000 in equity per year, plus $13,800 in bonus per year, which totals an $188,800 total annual compensation. So there you have it, that sums up this video. I hope that you've enjoyed everything that you've learned so far. Sometimes people do add other things into their total annual compensation. Like for example, at LinkedIn, we get a benefit called Perk Up, which is an allowance each year that we can spend on wellness and travel. And so some people might include something like that into their total annual compensation or just other benefits they, that they have, such as gym membership and things like that. Um, but the general rule of thumb is that in tech, the total annual compensation is your base equity and your bonus. Please stay on the lookout for future videos and I'll be talking about all things tech. Also feel free to check out my past videos as well. If you like what you heard in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye.